All right, so this video is our kinematics intro. We're gonna start by talking about some definitions, some terms, and how to calculate some basic things from those. Uh, to start off with, we're gonna look at distance and displacement. So here's the main distinction. Distance is how far along a path something has traveled. Displacement is how far from start to finish it has traveled. Uh, so to calculate distance, you just measure how long the entire path is. You know, if somebody were to go uh, one meter up, three meters to the right, one meter down, that would be five total meters of distance. Whereas that would be a displacement of three meters to the right. So the other big distinction here is that distance uh, does not have a direction. It is a scalar, not a vector. And a displacement is a vector. It has a direction. So it tells you how far you are away from where you started and what direction you went during that time, or for any object. These are our first two most basic examples. Um, the symbols that we use for each of these, sometimes we just use lowercase d for both of them. Another symbol that's specifically used only for displacement would be delta and then x for position. X is used a lot of times in position uh, because position starts with an X. And as you keep going, well, I, I guess it's really it's because they use X for horizontal in math a lot, but you know, this works too. Uh, and so this means displacement. It's how much X position has changed. Change in X, delta is for change. And so this also is equal to X final minus X initial. So the horizontal uh, final position minus the horizontal initial position tells you how much the position has changed in the horizontal direction. You'd also do it as a delta y for a vertical direction. We're not going to get into that right now. Okay, so this is our first couple things. Easy to calculate. You just subtract the two starting and ending positions to find displacement. Now, uh, next thing we're going to look at is speed and velocity. It's a similar relationship between these two. Uh, but it's not exactly the same thing. So we'll get there in just a second. All right, so both of these are how fast an object is moving. Speed is a scalar. It's just how fast you're going. That's what your speedometer in your car tells you. It tells you how fast your car is going. Velocity tells you how fast and also the direction that you're going in. The big distinction, though, between these is there's different kinds of these as well. Instantaneous and average speed and velocity. Now, instantaneous versus average. Real quick as a, a thing to note, in the, in the corner here, there's a little gear that uh, you can click on that you can use to speed up, slow down the video. So if I'm going too fast, going too slow for you, you can feel free to click on that, speed up or slow down the video as you're going through it. Uh, I would advise you take notes, uh, but if it's stuff that you already have way down, then uh, just breeze through it quickly. Uh, so instantaneous versus average. Average, I think we all know what the word average means. It means over a period of time, what is the average speed uh, or average velocity? And then instantaneous, that means right now, what is the speed or velocity right now or right then or right at seven seconds after it starts moving. That would be the instantaneous thing. This is what you would see on the speedometer. This you could calculate based on uh, some other things. So let's look real quick at how we can figure these out. Instantaneous, uh, well, actually, let's look at average first. Average, you can calculate by looking at the distance over the total time. So total distance divided by total time is going to give you the average speed. If you want to find the average velocity, then you're just going to do delta x over delta t. Divide the total displacement by the total time. Displacement is a vector, so this whole thing becomes a vector. Distance is a scalar, so the whole thing is a scalar. So if you think about swimming in a pool, down and back, 25 meters down, 25 meters back, uh, that trip would be 50 meters round trip, and it would be zero meters of displacement because you wind up back where you started. And so we can look at something like this to sort of show how average speed and average displacement, or average speed and average velocity aren't always the same thing. Now, if we look at instantaneous, what we actually need to look at for that is the, uh, how much it's changing right now. So if you think about it like meters per second, it's how many meters it goes through this second, this instant, right now. Uh, 
not how much it's how quickly it's going right before right after how much is it going right now and this is something that we're going to use calculus for we get at later on but the easy way you can do this is if you have a position versus time graph these come from the slope this comes from the slope of that line we'll get into that in a little more detail but it's a that's the big thing to look at this is the average over any interval if you want to look at the first half the second half the whole thing you can look at that uh, that way the total distance divided by the total time or the total displacement divided by the total time now last thing we want to look at is acceleration acceleration is a change in the velocity of an object so if an object is changing its velocity it is accelerating if it is not changing its velocity it is not accelerating that's as simple as it is uh, so remember again velocity has a value a magnitude and a direction because it's a vector so if the speed changes if something slows down or speeds up its velocity changes and so it is accelerating if something stays at a constant speed it can still accelerate and the way that that would happen would be by changing its velocity without changing the speed since velocity also has a direction something that is turning is also considered something that is accelerating and accelerations are results of forces which we've already learned in our previous classes so anytime you would need to push something to make it change its motion it's accelerating that's the big thing to remember here and we're going to look at the average velocity calculation here uh, just to, to take a look at something here all right so here we've got an average acceleration sometimes it's written as a with a bar over it for average this is a kind of standard notation but it could also be written with an ave after it or avg after it for average and so to calculate the average acceleration we're going to look at the same sort of calculation we did before we're looking at the change in velocity divided by the change in time how much the velocity changes in a certain amount of time all right so it's going to be delta v change in velocity over the change in time if you wanted to write that out a little more uh, it's going to be the final velocity minus the initial velocity divided by the final time minus the initial time often this is zero so it, it would just be divided by the time elapsed uh, but this is the way that you can write this equation down something simple like that if you got any questions please let me know there's one last thing i want to look at which is uh, something about this these are vectors so it's important you're paying attention to direction we're going to look at one thing which is changing velocity and doing a calculation for a change in velocity all right so we've got an example here we're gonna have an object that starts off moving 10 meters per second and then later is moving 20 meters per second just like this what's the change in velocity you might think if this is the beginning this is the end the change in velocity is 10 meters per second and you'd be right because it was moving 10 meters per second now it's moving 20 meters per second you do final minus initial and you get 10 meters per second however we need to pay attention to direction in this case if instead this ball was moving to the left it's still going 10 meters per second at the beginning 20 meters per second at the end but when we look at this change in velocity we need to it's 20 minus 10 would give you 10 but that's not what we have in this case this is to the left this is to the right and so at the beginning it's moving to the right we first had to slow it down all the way to zero that's 10 meters per second change to the left and then we get to speed it up all the way to 20 to the left so this actually is a change of 30 meters per second in the left direction in this case so the way we can do this again if you pay attention to the positives and negatives it doesn't really matter which way you say is positive so we'll say maybe to the right is positive just to be conventional about it uh, so this is our initial velocity is equal to positive 10 meters per second and our final velocity would be negative 20 meters per second then we would not get this but this and we'd get negative 30 meters per second is our total change in velocity this should prepare you to do our kinematics review problem set number one on a web assign please take a look at that and uh, we'll get going there's also a uh, another one this sort of welcome to web assign one just to get you used to how to use it should be very quick uh, make sure you go through that as well too thank you very much